This is the Quiet Cat Ranger, and I don't know about you, but when I hear that name, I think of a bike that's very comfortable being out in the wild. So is the Ranger a true all-terrain e-bike made for that environment? Let's take a ride and find out. Welcome back to Electric Bike Report. My name is John. Just one quick reminder before we dive in. If you're shopping for an e-bike, please make sure you're subscribed to this channel and you have notifications turned on. We wanna help you find the best bike for you and we publish new e-bike reviews, comparisons, and other content a couple times every week. But back to all-terrain bikes, there are a few key elements we usually look for, starting with a powerful motor, the Ranger is equipped with a 1000 watt rear hub motor from Bafung, so it definitely has that part taken care of. Good off-road tires and a suspension are just as important, and those are covered too. We have a set of Kenda Juggernaut tires, which are either 20 inch by 4 inch or 26 inch by 4.5 inch, depending on the frame size. And the fork is a coil suspension from Mozo with 100 millimeters of travel, so plenty of room to soak up those bumps. There isn't a rear suspension here, but that's because this is a bike made for some heavy lifting. The Ranger has a 325 pound total carrying capacity, which includes the rider, and it has a welded on, beefed up cargo rack that can handle up to 100 pounds on its own. The bike can also be equipped with either a cargo trailer or a game trailer, so you've got plenty of room for supplies if you're headed to a remote campsite, or you can carry that 12 point buck back to your truck in one trip. We really like the Ranger's solid and stable feel. Part of that was from the bike's overall size. It weighs 82 and a half pounds and it's just a beast. But on top of that, those big tires made it feel really well planted on loose dirt and mud when I was testing it. And the 740 millimeter handlebars helped out a lot with great balance and steering. The Ranger definitely feels its size, but in my mind, that was actually a good thing. So let's quickly run through the rest of the specs and components so we can talk about the bike's performance. There's a removable 48 volt battery tucked into the down tube with 16 amp hours or 768 watt hours of capacity. There's a seven speed SRAM drivetrain with a 36 tooth chain ring and a 12 to 32 tooth cassette, as well as an X4 derailleur. The Tektro E350 hydraulic brake system uses 203 millimeter rotors, which is a little larger than we typically see paired with the system. So we'll talk more about those in our brake test section later on. But there's a custom Quiet Cat Comfort Plus saddle with memory foam. And then up in the cockpit, those super wide handlebars have straight rubber grips. There's a large control panel and thumb throttle on the left bar. There's a below the bar shifter on the right and then there's a centrally mounted color display. The Ranger comes in four color options. This one is called Sonic, and then there are three camo patterns, including Veil Cumber, True Timber, and First Light Spectre. A cool thing about that last option is that Quiet Cat donates 8% of the purchase price to the National Deer Association, which is an organization of hunters that helps in the conservation of deer populations. And to finish things up, our contact at Quiet Cat told us that the Ranger isn't currently UL certified, but that it is in the certification process. So we expect to see that come through in the near future. But let's move on to the fun stuff now and see how the Ranger stacks up against the other all-terrain e-bikes we've tested. We tested the Ranger's Tektro hydraulic disc brakes in our brake test by bringing the bike up to 20 miles per hour hitting the brakes, and then measuring how far the bike traveled as it came to a stop. We did this three times and converted all of that data to an average, which was actually an even 23 feet. This result is better than average when compared to the other all-terrain bikes we've tested by a foot and a half. The current average for the category is 24 feet 6 inches. And it's worth mentioning that all-terrain bikes like this are a bit less common, so we don't have a ton of similar models to compare to. 
But those 203 millimeter rotors I mentioned earlier really gave the Ranger an advantage by helping to disperse heat more effectively than the 180 millimeter rotors we usually see paired with this brake set. I tested the Ranger on some dirt roads and trails out in the desert, and these brakes did a really solid job there. One time specifically, I came up to the crest of a hill that ended up being a lot steeper than I was comfortable going down, and these brakes stopped me right when I needed them to, so I could find a different way back to the road. If you're hauling a lot of weight, it's good to keep in mind that the brakes will probably be a little bit slower, and for that reason, I wouldn't mind seeing four piston calipers in the future instead of the two piston set here, but otherwise the current setup is definitely safe and effective for both on and off-road use. I took a GoPro with me when I did my speed test on the Quiet Cat Ranger, so let's take a look at how the bike did in both its Class 2 and Class 3 riding modes. I also tested the throttle so we could find out how quickly it could reach 20 miles per hour. All right, we are here on the Quiet Cat Ranger to do a Class 2 speed test. I'm pedaling here just with, uh, with the bike turned off, actually, at about 10 miles per hour, 9.5, 10 miles per hour. Uh, there is no like PAS zero, so I'm gonna kind of turn the bike on, see if it'll turn on on the fly. Yeah, there we go. And we're just automatically in eco mode here, which, there we go. All right, now that engaged, had to pause there, give it the uh, trigger of the sensor. So shifting up like five gears here, this thing's just taking off like a rocket. So by the bike's display, seems to be at about a half mile per hour difference or so. I'm up in seventh gear, which is the max. Cruising here. By the bike's display, just under 20 miles per hour, so 19.8. And then by uh, the phone app, a little bit more difference than I thought, around 19 miles per hour. So let's go up to trail mode and see if anything changes. I do feel a little extra power here. Okay, yeah, that kicks me up a little bit higher. 20.3 by the bike, 20 point, well, around 20 by the app. And then let's go up to boost mode, which is the third setting. That doesn't feel any different here because I, you know, it does feel like I am kind of topping out. Uh, Kind of right around 20.5, 20.6 by the bike, and 20.3 or 4 by the app here. So, okay, we'll call that our class 2 speed test on the Quiet Cat Ranger. I'll see you back here shortly for the class 3 test. All right, we are back on the Quiet Cat Ranger to do a class 3 speed test. Starting off in kind of about the same place, 9.5, 10 miles per hour or so, uh, at least by the app. So let's turn the bike on. And I will sort of pause my pedaling so I can engage that sensor now. And you can see that kicks in pretty quickly. So I'm gonna start shifting up here to about, well, yeah, seventh gear, so that's the top gear. And I've noticed that it sort of takes a little bit of time to build up to its uh, sort of limit in each PAS setting in class three mode. So I'm going to try to hit that before the end of our course here. And I'm kind of ghost pedaling at this point, right around 21 and a half miles per hour. So I guess I'm just going to kind of relax into that. And still picking up a little bit of speed, but we are right around 22 and a half miles per hour. So let's go ahead and go up to trail mode, get around this bend. Definitely picking up a lot of speed here. Up to about 26 and a half miles per hour, up towards 27, and then we'll finish it off in boost mode and see if there's anything left in the tank. Yeah, 
they're kind of right around the same. 26, 26 and a half. All right, we'll call that our class three speed test and I'll see you shortly for the throttle test. All right, we are back on the Quiet Cat Ranger to do a throttle acceleration test from zero to 20. I have it in boost mode and it does seem like there are different power levels to the throttle depending on which PAS setting you're in. So we're gonna try the fastest here and uh, see how long it takes to hit 20 by the bike's display. So let's start in three, two, one, go. Okay, pretty nice start there. Not too punchy. Picking up quick though. 19, 20. 20.6. So the Ranger ships as a class two e-bike with throttle and pedal assist up to 20 miles per hour, but it actually has four riding modes or class settings, each with three pedal assist levels that you can swap through in the settings menu. In class one mode, the throttle is deactivated, but the motor still is up, goes up to 20 miles per hour when you're pedaling. And in class three mode, it's similar, but the bike goes up to 28. There's also an unlimited setting that I tested and I could hit about 30 miles per hour with either the throttle or with pedal assist, but let's stick with the two class two and class three riding modes that I recorded. I started off with no pedal assistance and hit an even 10 miles per hour with a bit of effort, but then when I turned on the pedal assist system, I hit 19.8 miles per hour right away in eco mode. So this thing just went from zero to 60. There was a slight difference between trail and boost modes where I hit 20.4 and 20.7 miles per hour, but there wasn't a whole lot of room for variation with such a fast starting point. And then in class three mode, things started off a bit different. Eco brought me up to 22.7 miles per hour, but then both trail and boost modes were almost identical with 26.7 and 26.6 miles per hour. We definitely prefer to see much greater differences between settings in this test, and I'd suggest that perhaps Quiet Cat should look at creating a city mode or something similar, where the motor output is a bit more tuned down. But I will say that when I tested the bike out in the desert, it behaved a lot differently with a clear difference in feel between settings, and I really appreciated the power when I was out there. I also really liked how the throttle was tied into the pedal assist system, the maximum speeds were the same between settings, but the time it took to get there was different. So Eco felt gradual and controlled, while Boost felt a bit more lively. So all in all, I think this test showed that there's some room for improvement for those who wanna use the Ranger around town, but as a more rugged all-terrain bike, the Ranger is set up pretty well. In our range test, we took the Ranger out on our local bike paths with its class two settings. We did a test in eco mode and another in boost mode to see how far it could go before the battery ran out of juice. And we measured a bracket of 27.6 to 30.2 miles with a single charge. We usually expect more of a gap between those high and low end results in this test, but since the Ranger showed very little difference between settings in our speed test, this narrow bracket makes a bit more sense. Compared to the range of similar bikes we've tested, the Ranger looks to be on the low end of the spectrum, but it's not exactly that cut and dry. Part of the big picture is that a majority of those other all-terrain bikes have used mid-drive motors, which are naturally more efficient than rear hubs, but on top of that, the Ranger's 768 watt hour battery is on the smaller side in comparison. So overall, I think it's results check out and that's backed up by math. We calculated an estimate of about 61 minutes and 21 miles from the bike in its boost mode test, but our actual results showed a 55% increase in time and a 31% increase in distance beyond our expectations. I also wanna mention that rear hub motors have some benefits over mid drives when it comes to wear on the drivetrain. Super powerful mid drives produce a ridiculous amount of torque that can chew up a cassette in no time. So with a rear hub like this, you likely won't need to replace parts as often. I had to ride for a while to get to those desert roads and trails where I tested the Ranger and its range seemed really practical to me based on those rides. 
If you're hauling a heavy load, you'll probably end up with a bit less range, but you can always pick up Quiet Cat's solar charging station that allows you to recharge the battery anywhere the sun shines. As with every e-bike we review, we tested the ranger's climbing ability at a super steep path called Hellhole Trail. Justin rides just about every bike there for the sake of consistency, and I'm gonna pass you over so he can share his experience. Okay, taking the Quiet Cat Ranger up Hellhole on throttle only, has a thousand watt rear hub motor. Um, motor's outside Brandon Quiet Cat. The display kind of says Bafang to me, but we'll see. Um, either way, I'm expecting decent things given the watt output on that. Through this first section, you know, getting down to about nine high eights, and it feels like it's definitely got the power and the torque to kind of climb up hell hole no problem on throttle. Um, yeah, so we're down to about 8.5, 8.6 motor. What I would expect on the rear hub, you can hear it, it is on the lower kind of end of the spectrum in, ter in terms of uh, the frequency level. I'll let you listen to it through this section here and through this last punchy climb and let's see how it does. All right, yeah, so you can kind of hear the motor. It's pretty decent noise-wise. As far as power goes, it dropped down to about eight is all through that last section. So we'll see what the results are, but yeah, you can definitely climb hell hole and throttle only on this one, even with, you know, the big old fat tires and, you know, being a little bit heavier of a bike. It, obviously that power is important if you want to take this off road. So let's go to the tape and see how it does. Okay, so I'm gonna pedal hole now on the pedal test with the Quiet Cat Ranger. And we're gonna see how this does. Um, so right now, feeling pretty good through this steep section, right about 12 and a half miles per hour, 12, 11. I'm not pressing really hard. Gonna be in a rear hub motor. Try to let the motor do as much as it can. So through that section there, you know, 10-ish, 10.3, I think was the low that I got. Um, motor's a little bit louder when I'm pedaling, I think, but it's also, there's a lot of tire noise given how fat these are. I'll let you listen as I go through this next section. So yeah, the bike's shifting fairly well. It's not uphill when I've needed to. I've downshifted twice as all. Um, and held strong through everything. So I think it's going to be a pretty good result. Well, he said motor-wise noise, I'm actually having a hard time distinguish between the, those four inch tires <laughs> and the motor. So I think that's actually a compliment to the motor. Um, yeah, let's go to the tape and see how it did speed-wise. So for maximum climbing power, Justin did both tests in boost mode with the bike in its class two settings. With the throttle, he reached the top of the hill in 1 minute 35 seconds with an average speed of 11.4 miles per hour. And in the pedal test, he brought that time down to a minute and 23 seconds and moved a bit faster at an average of 13.1 miles per hour. Here again, the Ranger came in a ways behind most of the other all-terrain e-bikes we've tested, but there are a few things to consider with that. First, power and speed are often two different things, and most of the Quiet Cat bikes we've tested have been on the slower side in this test. Now, I'm speculating a bit here based on experience, but their results suggest to me that they put more of a focus on low-end torque for carrying or towing additional weight instead of just simply going fast. And second, the Ranger might have been a little on the slow side, but it clearly didn't have any trouble in this test. For me, it made short work of some steep and slippery hills when I had it out in the desert. And with a thousand watts of peak output in class two and three modes, and a 1440 watt peak in unlimited mode, there's clearly enough muscle there to handle just about anything. In my experience, it's extremely practical in rough environments, and I was really pleased with the overall climbing ability. 
I've talked a lot about the testing I did out in the desert, so I think it's about time we go see how the Ranger actually performed out there. Let's go for another spin and chat about the bike's ride quality, and then we can wrap things up back here. All right, so we are here again on the Quiet Cat Ranger to hopefully give you a feel for what it's like out here in a bit of a rougher off-road environment. And, you know, with that 1,000 watt rear hub, it has plenty of power for being out here. This bike has a mostly upright riding position. I've got a little bit of a forward lean going on if I'm seated, but uh, for the most part, very upright and comfortable. There are three frame sizes, a small, medium, and large that are advertised uh, to fit riders under five foot six to over six feet tall. I'm five foot 11 and I'm on the medium size frame here. So it feels good, but I do think I'd prefer maybe a little bit more leg extension. So I'd probably personally go for the large size frame. But the primary points of adjustment are gonna be the seat post and the rails on the saddle. So with that, uh, you can adjust your saddle height or make minor adjustments to your reach. But for any more you know, significant adjustments, you'd wanna consider uh, maybe adding spacers to the standard style stem here or swapping that out for something else. There's a suspension fork up front. There's no rear suspension. This is a hardtail. The fork is made by Mozo and has, I believe, 120 millimeters of travel there. But uh, you gotta be honest, it does a really nice job out here of smoothing things out. You do feel those bumps if you're sitting down on the back end, but you can always do what I'm doing here and, you know, stand to use your legs as a suspension or uh, Quiet Cat also offers a suspension seat post as well. The tires here are uh, available in two different sizes depending on the frame size. So the small size frame uses 24 inch by four inch tires while the medium and large have the 26 by four and a half. So plenty of great stability from those and lots of grip. When you're riding off-road, you can reduce the PSI a little bit for even more grip if you want to, but you get some added cushion from those as well. And then the motor, let's talk about that a little bit. Again, that thousand watt rear hub from Bafung. I'm riding in eco mode right now and you know, it's not really having any trouble at all. Although, you know, I do think that uh, in, if you're riding uphill, you're gonna get more of a workout here for sure. So, you know, you can see this, it's not having any trouble at all climbing over little things. And then if I bump up to trail mode, I get instant access to even more speed and power. So if I were coming up to a big steep hill, I'd consider this or boost mode, which we'll move up to here. And hey, there's a perfectly timed hill. I mean, I'm that was just a complete breeze. So a uh, piece of cake there. I think that's all we're gonna talk about here. Let's go back to the studio and finish things up. So I mentioned the Ranger's three frame sizes. The small is meant for riders five foot six and under. The medium fits those from five foot six to six foot, and the large goes from six feet up. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any more clarification on the limits of the low and high end there, but most riders should be able to find a good fit. I also said that I'd probably prefer the large frame to get more leg extension, and that's really the only difference between the medium and large frames, which I think is good. Everything else fit me really well. I do want to address the overall, I think the Ranger's ride quality was solid, and that just comes back to some of the things I mentioned early on. In particular, it was stable, it had really precise steering, and it had a ton of power. I did generally find it to be a comfortable bike to ride on top of everything else, and I think it's well suited to riding off the beaten path. There really is just something inherently fun about a bike that feels really big and powerful, but when you factor in function as well, I think that makes for a great experience. I had a seriously good time testing the Ranger, and I can definitely see the appeal, 
not only for fun, but also for a true working machine. In our speed, range, brake, and hill tests, as well as my personal testing in rougher environments, this bike proved that it's set up very well for off-road adventuring. And even in the areas where it achieved a little less than some of its peers, it's important to keep price in mind, and at around $3,000, this is one of Quiet Cat's most affordable e-bikes. So if you're looking for an e-bike you can use for hunting, fishing, camping, or just exploring, I think the Ranger is a solid choice that will definitely meet your needs. I'd encourage you to check out the Quiet Cat website through the link down in the video description. Using that link, if or when you make a purchase, helps to support our channel at no additional cost to you, and it also lets us know that you found this review helpful. You can find another link in the description to our written review if you want to dive into even more detail or see what's new in the world of e-bikes. But that's all for this one. Thanks for taking a ride with me. Again, I'm John with Electric Bike Report, and this is the Quiet Cat Ranger.